It's a good question. I, I actually reflected on this question before the call because I was trying to figure out failures and I, I'm sure I know I have many. I, you know, I think one of the reasons I sometimes struggle with this question is, and maybe maybe people do struggle with this question because it's like, well, where has there there been an abject failure in my life? Like a full, like everything, you know, I hit rock bottom. That's what I'm picturing. I think it's a great question. I've been fortunate not to experience that uh, just because I have this tremendous safety net, but I have definitely experienced periods of um, discouragement, high degrees of emotional uh, you know, pain, uh, I've experienced, uh, you know, many mistakes professionally. Uh, and so as I approach this question, what is failure? I guess I approach it more. That's not nice. I love it. That's great timing. (laughs) (laughs) That is funny. I got Siri on my watch here. Always happens, man. Um, yeah, I guess I approach this, uh, you know, I guess I'll, I'll answer the question, but I don't have any like, oh, me- mega stories. But I'll, I'll tell you, I'll tell you where my brain goes and what my disposition is as I approach this question. Um, and, and here's where it goes. So when I started my career, I actually am an accountant by 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 education. Uh, so I went to school. I don't know if I knew that. I don't yeah, know if I knew that. Yeah, accounting. And uh, I, I was on the CPA track. I was studying for the CPA exams. I, I did five years of school in preparation to get my CPA license. I was in accounting. Uh, wow. And long story short, and there's probably a lot to orbit around here, but you know, I was really good at accounting, debits and credits. And I got invited to the honors class, you know, sophomore year and not the fake one. (laughs) Yeah. Not the fake one. (laughs) Very nice. Very nice. Uh, and you know, I was like, oh yeah, this is cool. And it's a great career. Honestly, accounting is so vital for business fluency. And I am super grateful. I did it because of the level of business fluency, understanding financial statements, just, just general literacy that it gives you. It is so vital. Uh, so super grateful I did it. It's also a great career. You know, it's technical. It's, um, you know, there's certifications associated with it. Um, it's very admirable. But as I progressed through my college career, keep in mind, I had this entrepreneurial background. I was making websites at fourth grade. I was I made a space website in like seventh grade. And the space website, I was like writing about different planets, like Jupiter was one of them. I, I later found out that a college student had cited my website on their write-up about space and Jupiter, and That's they had to do it called the Space Base. And so, you know, me in seventh grade, I'm like, yeah, I've made it, you know, very entrepreneurial. And now I'm doing accounting. Accounting is more of typically an oversight role. There's a lot of creativity and planning that goes into it, but not at the level I was playing at, you know, uh, as a, as a, college student as a 23 year old. So anyway, long story short, I entered my, I progressed through college and started my first job at PricewaterhouseCoopers in Houston and quickly recognized that this was just not the career for me, Um, especially the nature of the role at that firm. And also at that time, uh, it was very tough for me. There was a lot of oversight. It, It was very tough not because of oversight, but really because of what the type of work we were doing. So I was working in audit at large clients, such as like Chevron, Exxon Mobile. And there's a lot, like I said, a lot of creativity that goes on there. A lot of um, professional, uh, you know, we deploy our full professional skill set. But when you're 23 years old, your job is to open up Excel, grab a stack of invoices, a stack of bill of ladings, open up Excel and have 18 columns and 200 rows and just enter in the information. Invoice number, amount, tie it to the bill of lading, invoice number, amount, and just build essentially a, a, a transaction log that audits, you know, whatever part of the business I was auditing, say accounts receivable, whatever. And so it's very, very painful for me because uh, another tenant of, big four accounting, if if anyone knows, is that busy season is a is a thing. And 
Uh, so, you know, we were working late. I was working till midnight, you know, I was working summer days. This was, you know, this was before remote work. It was also back in 2012, I was the last of a generation of corporate employees, I think. And it was where there was a high degree of formality and also a high degree of power distance between you and your superiors. Mm. So I faced that a lot at my firm. You know, I would be told to get coffees, like to go get coffees for, for you know, my direct superior uh, who was, you know, he was 25 and there's eight superiors above him. And I was told, hey, go make these copies. You know, I was just really lowest of the low. And so I'm going through this and I feel like I'm not really able to express my create creative muscles. You know, I have this entrepreneurship is a conviction. Okay. It's a trait and it's a conviction, which means you can't let go. Like you, you can't, like you have an urge to create. And I was doing the opposite of creating at this stage of my career and the, and the path I had chosen. Uh, and so it was extremely painful for me. And I, I look back at that time, not as a failure, but as approaching failure had I not executed the way I did. Yeah. So what do I mean by that? I mean, having the courage to recognize that this career that you put five years of your life into, that you told all your friends you're doing, may not be the right career choice for me. And that takes courage and it takes reflection. And on the other side, it seems obvious to me, well, it doesn't take that much courage. You know, you're 24. I think I left at 25. You're 25 years old. You can do anything. You, you know, you, you can literally quit your job, go travel and then come back and hopefully get another job. But when you're in it, and I think this is true, whether you're 25 or you're 40, when you're in it, you don't always have that 10,000 foot view of optionality that truly does exist. Yeah. And so having the courage to take that option and to make the calls and to do a completely, you know, completely horizontal, you know, just restart my career, essentially, uh, you know, that took a lot. And I witnessed a number of people who maybe did not have the level of fulfillment they were seeking in their work who stayed, you know, at, at that firm. I noticed a lot of people who stayed at that firm and loved it for sure. But I also noticed a lot of people that stayed just because they didn't have the courage to exercise some optionality, to make some calls and to, to even some humility to, to restart my career, to start working in a domain that you're not, as qualified in, you know, that, that's painful. That's existentially painful. Uh, and so when you ask the question failures, you know, that's the immediate story that comes to my mind is just how you, how I was careening down a path towards failure. And I could confidently say that who I am in my young thirties now versus had I stayed doing something that did not fill me up with passion and did not make the best use of my professional competencies. Had I stayed uh, that would have just been terrible. I'd be a very different person. Yeah, for sure. Well, I love it. There's so many good things about that. And you mentioned the word passion too. So I've got to, got to talk about this. It's, it's interesting to hear all that. Um, and then I, I recently learned that, you know, the passion, the, the word passion, actually the root of it means to suffer, which I think is really interesting to think about, but you were willing to chase something you were passionate about and suffer the consequences, whatever they may be. It's like, you know, what are people going to think? Am I qualified to do this? Is there going to be pain learning this new system, whatever I'm in? Um, so I thought that was really interesting. I also thought it was interesting that counting the numbers, entering in the data, the data, um, it was something that didn't excite you. But I also, from my point of view, it, it really... Uh, showed you discipline. And I think it led to the success of cloud panel now, because you, obviously there are things you don't want to do in entrepreneurship. There are things you have to do that you just have to be disciplined in. And a part of that is I'm sure like accounting and you have that background where I don't like this, but this is a part of what I love doing. Um, and I think from my perspective, it's added all that, that whole story. Like I said, there was so much there. But that whole story of going from accounting to leaving, um, there were just so many lessons in there.